So I am going to speak about C++ incidental explorations. And, and uh, let's set the expectations. It's not about incidents. I, I mean, not necessarily about incidents. The explora explorations are incidental. So, so it is my explorations through Stack Overflow mainly on um, trying to learn C++. Uh, so I could uh, call that uh, C++ associative explorations if I want, but then ex uh, associative is also a term term terminology thing that maybe I'll, I'm talking about associative containers. No, it's about learning C++ from questions and answers. Uh, and uh, let's start with a short uh, introduction. I'm a lecturer at the Academic Lodge of Tel Aviv Yafo, a visiting lecturer this year at Stony Brook University in New York, member of the Israeli uh, ISO national body, co-organizer of uh, this conference. I hope that you enjoy. enjoy. Uh, dev advocate at Incredibuild. Uh, here comes the marketing plug. Uh, if you suffer from slow builds, uh, talk to me or go to our site, uh, we do build uh, or CI pipeline acceleration. Uh, why, alive, why do I love uh, Stack Overflow? So the reason I uh, really uh, like Stack Overflow is that um, I actually learned C++ from Stack Overflow, uh, first by reading questions, uh, then by asking, asking questions, and then third by trying to answer questions. And I, I will, try with, uh, I will uh, start with uh, an example that I gave uh, in my talk last year, so if you were in Core C++ 2022, sorry for that, it will be quite quick. Maybe you saw that if you were in my talk. Um, there was a question um, on Chrono. Uh, the question is not really important. I, I will just skip to, to the answer that I was trying to give. I saw the question and I said, well, I think I know how to answer that. So I don't know if you know about Stack Overflow. Usually, you have to be quick, because if, if you do not submit your answer quickly, you work on the answer, you say, I'm not sure that this is uh, such a good answer, so you invest more. And once you eventually press the submit, somebody else submitted already, got the reputation, and you are just history. You, you just, you know, you can waive your answer. So uh, I just, you know, put the code inside and submitted the code. I mean, this is what you are looking for. And again, again the code is not so important. And then I, I got a, a comment, not by the original poster, not by the one that asked the question, but by another dude. This answer would be better if you explained why. Man, I, I just you know, posted so I, be, I will be the first. I mean, I will explain in a moment. Give me some time. Anyhow, this was my intent, to, to add some explanation. But then, Somebody came in with a comment on the question, and the somebody was Howard Inant. Howard Inant is the man behind Chrono and the man behind Move Semantics. And he was asking, what is the first AO that you got? I mean, he was asking the submitter, the one who asked the question. And now, with Howard Inant on the question, I'm a bit cold feet. So I answered the guy who was asking for explanations. Well, I'm uh, about to add some explanations, but now with Howard Inant on the page, I'm a bit cold feet. Uh, and then I added some explanation. And I got a comment by our Dinant saying, you are doing fine, but can you rewrite it without using count? And I want to speak about that. Chrono is in many ways about type safety. When you use Chrono, you don't want to use hard-coded numbers or just numbers without measurement units. The idea is that if you use seconds, there are seconds. If you use minutes, there are minutes. And in the code that I provided, you can see somewhere uh, in the if, you would see that I'm calling count and, and comparing count to zero. Now, there isn't any need for that because you can, you can just compare the amount to zero or to, the, to zero seconds. So, I mean, yeah, he's right. Uh, uh, the best way to work with Chrono is don't go to the numbers. Use the types that go with their measure measurement units because the whole idea is that you will not mix up between seconds and minutes, okay? Once you go to the count, to the actual value, you omit the measurement units, then you just waive the type safety. So I said, yeah, he's right, and I amended the answer which now is without count, okay? And, and I just compare something to zero seconds. And then I got another comment by our Dinant. Much better, that was my upvote, by the way. Now you just need to clean up your explanation a little, which I did. 
And that was a private tutorial without Inant on my answer on Chrono, which I thought that I have an answer, and eventually it wasn't so good. I mean, I had to amend that, and I really liked that, to have a private tutorial with our Inant on my uh, answer. By the way, it continued with another comment that he had about the actual question. The question was on using Modulu, on uh, trying to do something once in five seconds, which is not a proper way. And then we both came to another uh, proposal for the original submitter. So again, this is why I like Stack Overflow, because I learn from that. So I want to uh, explore with you a few questions in Stack Overflow, some that I wrote, some that I answered, some that I just read. Um, so let's start with questions that I'm get, getting back to occasionally. And the first one is, can using auto improve performance? This is quite old. I'm being asked when I teach auto, okay, that's nice, but it is syntactic sugar after all. So should we use it always um, or it doesn't really matter? What is the value of using auto? And my example based on this stack of flow uh, QA is that auto can actually improve your performance. And this is the example from Stack Overflow. This is a bad example of not using auto and creating redundant copies silently. Can you see the issue here? Yeah, I, I guess many of you know that. When you iterate over a map and you get out the pairs, you actually create here, even though you take it by ref, you actually create here copies of the pair, copies of the key, copies of the value. It's a real disaster. I mean, and usually you do not see it, right? A profiler will not show you that because it's, it's like cut, uh, uh, dead by 1,000 cuts. I, I mean, yeah, I pay something for silently creating copies. And the reason is that when you iterate over a map, the return value is not a pair of key value. It's a pair of const key and value. Now, I mean, it shouldn't compile, but it, it does because it, it, it should compile because you take it as a const pair ref, and a const ref can bind to a temporary. So a temporary is being created as a pair of key and value from the pair that is being returned, which is a pair of const key and value, and copies are created. Go back to your code, you may have that, those. I, I mean, usually when I show that, people during the break do the VPN and go back and come. Oh, in my grep I found uh, two of those. Uh, so the, the right way to do that is with auto. By the way, you could add the const on the key. If I add the const on K, this would be a solution, but how many of you are doing that? I mean, I don't, um, so, so going with the auto is, is better. And, and this is the question in Stack Overflow. So usually when I'm asked about that, I'm saying, oh, there is a question in Stack Overflow asking that. And I just find the, the link, it's quite easy. Uh, can auto improve performance or something like that? And this is where I aim, I'm uh, sending my students when they ask that. Um, Overload resolution for reference types. I mean, this is quite classic. How, how, uh, what are the rules? Which goes where? Uh, if I have four functions, uh, four foos, four bar ref, const bar ref, r value, const r value. Do we need the const r value? Is there any use of const r value? This is another question. Anyhow, uh, so there is a very nice table in Stack Overflow. Uh, which I go occasionally to, or I, I, you know, I point students to, oh, you want to know who goes where? So, uh, and I see this table also in, in books. Anyhow, this is the link to, to the table. I really like it. Uh, one, of the, one of the reasons that I like it, I'll show it uh, in Stack Overflow, is uh, this is the table. One of the reasons that I like it is that I, I provided the, the, the table. Um, but I go back to the table. I mean, uh, uh, the easiest way to find something is put it on the web, right? in your own blog or in somewhere that you can find it later, right? Um, and that, that is quite useful. Uh, so, implementing your own iterator class. Occasionally you have uh, um, a container that you created and you want to uh, iterate over this container and you want to create a class for iterator and then you ask yourself, how should I implement iterator? I remember that there is something with uh, implementing the plus plus, uh, not equal, um, the ref, there is also th something about iterator traits. Should I inherit from std iterator the way? No, because it is deprecated. It was deprecated in C17. Why was it deprecated? 
because they realize that it is a bit confusing because people may think that iterator should or is uh, a derived class of std iterator and then they may think that they can use polymorphism for iterators which is not the case. Stud iterator was like a utility class for helping you if you want to implement an iterator but if it is confusing then let's just deprecate that. So if you actually want to implement an iterator you just need to create your type traits manually okay or, or use boost iterator or any other uh, base class if you want um, and then implement the other stuff that you need from the iterator and since I don't really remember that by heart so usually I just go for the proper link in Stack Overflow and, and I don't remember the link also so I just you know Google the implementing iterator or something Stack Overflow and go and I go back to this uh, question that again you can realize why I like the question and the answer uh, because the, the question is nice, but the answer is even even nicer um, because I gave it. Uh, so, uh, uh, by the way, this is um, if, if you understand the, the idea of the talk, this is a way to earn today reputation for Stack Overflow. Um, what I'm trying to say is that it is quite a useful resource to go back to either things that you wrote or other uh, things like the auto thing was not mine, uh, things that you want to go back to. Um, Another thing that I like with Stack Overflow is that in some cases there is a question um, that the question is nice. I mean, the question is not so magnificent, but the answer is beautiful. And I want to show you two examples of uh, questions that I really like the answers to. So the first one is this quite basic question. Um, we are returning in foo. What, what do we return in foo? Uh, a pointer to, to a local address of a local. Don't do that, right? Uh, it's it's uh, undefined behavior, we call that. And, and the question was, but it works. It prints five and eight. By the way, I, I ran it at, and, and it, it, pr it printed eight and eight. Uh, it depends on the optimization level. It is undefined behavior. The compiler can do anything. So eventually the question was, how come it works? Okay. How come you can actually access um, memory that was released in a way? And the answer is, is wonderful. The answer is that, suppose that you um, check in to a hotel. And then you um, read a book, you put the book in your uh, drawer, and you check out. And then you realize that you forgot the book in the drawer. But then you realize that you have still the key. So let's go back to the room. Maybe they didn't invalidate the key. I, I can go back to the room and take the book. And nobody will notice, I, I, I guess. I mean, it's only 30 minutes since I left the room. Now, you go back to the room, and then many things can happen. What can happen? You get the book. I mean, most probably, I mean, in test environment, you will get the book, right? What will happen in production? You get a book. Another one. Uh, I mean, you, you open the drawer, there is a book. It's the same book, but the previous version for some reason, because the next guest is reading the same book, he has another version, okay, um, in another language. Anyhow, you open, uh, you were in page 50, something else go is going on there. I mean, you got a book. Um, another thing that can happen, you open the door, you step in, and you fall 15 stories down because the hotel is now uh, in renovations. Um, Many things can happen. I think that you, you get the idea. Maybe you imagine other things that can happen. Okay. Take that uh, wherever you want. Anyhow, the, the, the story is nice. I really like that. So um, it goes there. And, and there is many other things that you can do. You can, you can play with static code analysis on that. So the link here is with uh, Clunk Tidy, if you want. Um, by the way, something quite interesting. This question, let, let, let me show you, show you the question. Uh, this question got a very high reputation, which eventually gets very high reputation for the original poster, for the one, uh, one who asked the question, which is nice. I mean, it's, it's a nice question eventually, but a uh, basic one. There was a question that came before quite exactly the same, the forgotten sibling, uh, very similar, who got only four reputation. Why? Because the other one got the nice, uh, beautiful answer, and then they were merged. Life is not fair. I mean, this was first. 
and it was merged with the, with the one that came after a few months later or a year later or something like that. Uh, the thing is that the other one got the nice answer. So I, I can just go back to the answer with the hotel room. This is the one with, if you want, I, I mean, you'll get the links. Um, this is the idea with, yeah, I just forgot a book. Go get it, what will happen? I mean, usually it works. It worked, it worked on my machine. Um, so I, I, I like that, okay? Uh, another one with a very high score, I think this is uh, one of the highest in Stack Overflow. Do you know, uh, do you have in mind the highest in Stack Overflow? So in, in order to be very high in, uh, in Stack Overflow, it, it should be not on C++ because we are a niche eventually. Uh, so uh, this, one, this one is on many languages. The, the question is not, it, it is not specific to C++. Um, so the question was, somebody was trying to uh, perform some operation on a container of many, many items, many elements, and they realized that when they sort the container and run and perform the operation or the operations, then it is much faster taking into account into the benchmark the sorting itself, of course. So sorting and performing the operation is faster than just performing the operation. And you actually do not need the sort. But adding the sort improves performance. And then the question is, how come? And the answer is branch prediction. OK, cache, uh, code caching and branch prediction. And this is a very nice answer that starts with um, train uh, junctions. When a train needs to decide where to go, and there isn't any, any digital signaling or something, and there is a man with a flag. And it might be that you will not see the flag. So it might be that the best strategy would be go to the path where you usually should go. And then if you are wrong, do a reverse. In, in most cases, you will be fine. In some cases, OK, we missed. We'll go back. It is beautifully written. I mean, and then you realize, OK, I understand what is branch prediction. So I like that. You have the link. Um, and anyway, again, I'm coming back to this question occasionally. Do you know this uh, C++ operator? Did you use that? X wants to go to zero. I want, while X is striving to zero, I want to do something. Did you use this operator? So there was a question, what is this train C++ operator? And the answer is, did you use that one? It's the minus minus, okay? Anyhow, uh, uh, the space there is a bit confusing, but it's the minus minus and the uh, bigger than. By the, way, by, by the way, again, very high reputation for the question. You see? I mean, try that. Ask a dumb question and try to earn reputation. Uh, oh, and, and now we want that. But you, we cannot edit. Because then it will you know, change the behavior of this one. I mean, the, the ISO committee needs to take into account existing code. So, and, and space, you cannot uh, uh, play with, oh, I will add space. No, it will not help. Um, one of the things that I like is to address unfavorable questions. So in some cases, I see a question that maybe even get negative, uh, like down votes. And I, usually, it is when the question is submitted, OK? I, 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 when I have time, I go and see some C++ questions. And, and I see that the question is getting down votes. And, and still, I think that the question is fair, is, is legit. I mean, it's, it's a good question. So in some cases, I, I um, urge to answer it. Why do I urge? Why do I like, come quickly to answer that? Because when you see the down votes, eventually somebody may close the question. And if you are investing time in answering and you didn't hit submit and the question is closed, then you can throw away your answer because you cannot answer closed questions. So if you see something and you say, that's a legitimate question even though it is downvoted and I want to submit something, then first submit. I think that I have the answer. Okay, you now can edit your answer. Uh, so um, let's take, can a class include a member of its own type? What do you say? By the way, can in C++ a class include a member of its own type? Oh, you say a pointer. But the question was a member of its own type. And the answer is no, because then its size would be infinite or zero if, if you are probably infinite. It cannot be zero because uh, you have only uh, 
be, uh, empty base optimization, zero, and otherwise all classes in, in uh, C++ are not zero size. Anyhow, the size will be infinite because you hold yourself and yourself, holds yourself, which holds yourself recursively. So the answer is no. And, and the question was about to be closed, and I, I, I said, okay, I do want to answer that because, okay, you cannot, but you still can do things, okay, like holding a pointer, which is not the answer because you don't, I, I mean, you, it is the answer. You can hold the pointer, but you maybe want even better to hold a smart pointer of some kind or whatever, okay? So uh, let, let's, let, let's discuss that. And it got minus two just because I voted that up. Uh, so th this is my answer. The answer starts with the, the question started with Java syntax. So instead of uh, point for this, it should be arrow for this. Uh, private public should look a bit uh, different than in Java, etc. And then we go to the actual thing that you cannot actually hold yourself because in Java or other languages, an object is a reference to an object, and in C++, an object is the actual value of the object. So you have to hold something else. And then the something else can be of many different types. And then I want to ask you, can it be? I, I, I mean, and, and it affects the semantics. I mean, if you hold a unique PTR of your, can you hold a unique PTR of yourself? Yes, you can. I mean, it is not the same object. It's like another object that I hold of my own type. Anyhow, can you hold a reference to yourself? I'm not sure how long is the initial Oh. Shahar is asking a good or raising a good comment here. So technically you can. I can hold the reference to myself. But then the question is, how would the first object be created? Because when you hold the reference, you must initialize the reference. Reference cannot be calm, can, cannot be born uninitialized. Then the first one that is going to be born must have initialization for its reference, which would be, it can be itself. Let's think about that. Or it can be telltales all the way down, which wouldn't work. Um, so what about, yeah, it is myself. Can I, can I give myself as initialization for this is my reference, either on the member declaration itself or in the constructor? So then comes the question, can we use the object itself or its address before it completed its construction? Okay, there is another Stack Overflow question on that that we will go to, and, and it was discussed here in my answer, uh, but we'll go that, to that, okay? The answer is yes, you can, but for certain usages only. Um, so I, I, again, I think that this is a valid question, uh, even though the community didn't like that for some reason, and I think that C++ does have something, something to say about that and discuss the semantics. I mean, it is not the same thing holding a unique PTR to yourself. Yourself, I mean, not yourself as an instance, yourself as a type, and holding a shell PTR to your type. And this is the discussion that I raised in that question. And, and you can imagine the idea. I mean, we'll not dive more into that. Storing dynamically created objects. So again, a question that uh, got voted down. Um, I voted up. You, you see the orange arrow? It is a Screenshot from my uh, user. So the question is legit, I think, and it is, how should we hold values, let's say, in a vector or in a container? As pointers? As concrete types? What do you say? Uh, the reason that it was downvoted, and uh, maybe even closed by now, is that usually in Stack Overflow, they don't like questions which the answer is, it depends on the usage. It depends on what you actually are trying to achieve. But I'm okay with such questions because, because the answer can go and say, okay, if you're trying to achieve that, then you can do that. And if you're trying to achieve something else, I mean, I can take it into, into the answer. So this is what I did. I tried to analyze, okay, what are you trying to achieve? But then, you know what? If you're in C plus 11 and up, you are in C plus 11 and up, right? Uh, then and most probably, you should prefer holding concrete types not, and not pointers. I mean, why should you hold pointers? You may say for efficiency. Move semantics. Move semantics should solve efficiency issues of holding actual concrete types. Okay, then you may say, oh, but I need polymorphism. And then I will say, I think that it would be better to hide your polymorphism 
and not expose that on the vector. I mean, hold concrete types that manage inside the state, and the state may use polymorphism. Uh, maybe think about value semantics. I mean, you don't want to think about who is the owner. Um, you, you don't want to take your design choices and put them up front to the user. Uh, by the way, it's not only bug prone, it also prevents the liberty of changing that later. And once you say, okay, I will hold the concrete type, some kind of uh, manager, some kind of a wrapper, some kind of a holder, then later I can decide whether I want to change the state to use this, to use instead of polymorphism, maybe you would decide to go to variant for efficiency reasons or for any other. So instead of deciding up front, you may want to say, okay, this is what I hold, and inside I'm managing states, which goes with state pattern. So th this is what I want uh, to, to convey in my answer. This is my answer, by the way. Uh, I told you that I go through my, some of mine. Um, and and it, again, it went through the considerations. And, and the cons considerations are quite, in a way, uh, design specific. But I think that eventually, we do have an answer today. Try to avoid pointers. I don't think that you need pointers there. Uh, a glimpse into Stack Exchange Data Explorer. Did, do you know that you, you can not just search in, uh, Stack of, in Stack Overflow for questions, you can have queries. So uh, to prepare this talk, I just ran a few queries and I want to show you the uh, Stack Exchange um, uh, UI um, interface. So let's go for SO post with highest score. Okay, so this is the query that I ran. Select top 500 IDs, uh, post links, score view count, etc. cetera. Uh, that, uh, let's run that, maybe it will take some time. No, it is here. Oh, anonymous users, I have to, anyhow, should I, anonymous users, oh, I have to be not a robot. Let's see if I'm not. And, may take, take some time, I should have run that before. Anyhow, I'm trying to see what are the most voted questions and answers in Stackflow, and, and one of them is the one with the sort, do you remember? Um, and then we can learn things, uh, what is popular, what uh, people are asking, I mean, of all times, it's not on this year, I, I can also um, condition that on a year, on a period, etc. What was popular in 2018, I don't know, whatever. Uh, while it is running, I will go to other questions that I have, like uh, IS C++ course which again, I ran for uh, preparing stock and, and uh, trying to see what it, or most controversial C++ post. What makes a C++ post, I mean a question or answer controversial? A lot of upvotes and downvotes. Something that got many upvotes and many downvotes, which is interesting. Like, you know which question got a lot of upvotes and downvotes? The x to zero, the minus minus bigger than. It got a lot of score, the score is high, but it was uh, with, with a lot of downwards. Uh, so it is interesting, you can go in and uh, say that you're not a robot and then you'll see things there. Um, and, and you can even create your own TIOB index by asking which are the most popular tags in, in Stack Overflow and the most popular tag in Stack Overflow is, you can guess, I think the JavaScript. Um, one of the things, I will not run that now, but uh, one of the interesting things is uh, I think that right um, near C++, for some reason that I cannot explain, is jQuery, which is a specific technology inside JavaScript, which probably many questions there, I don't know. Uh, anyhow, C++ is quite high. It's not, um, it's a very p uh, poor, TIOB index for, uh, but you can see which are the tags which are more, most popular in Stackflow. Let's go back to uh, questions, answers. Um, do our value references to quants have any use? So we saw the table. We saw the table. And, and usually when we implement things for our value, we implement things for uh, non cons And the reason is that when, when you want to do something with our value, you want to, to move, which is a nice word for still. You want to steal the original value and then for that you need to invalidate the original value. Otherwise, if you do not like invalidate the original value, then when it will be distracted, it will just take the resources that you moved from, that you took, right? So for invalidating the old value, I must write to it. 
So actually, I cannot implement a valid move or a reasonable move with a con style value, which is the reason that mostly you will not create any const r value implementation, even though you can. So there was a question in Stack Overflow of is there any use for const r value functions? I mean, this is interesting. I'm curious. And of course, there was a, uh, an answer, a good answer by the, the one that answers quite quickly most questions on r value and move semantics and chrono oh. is our dinant. No, I'm, I'm quite after. Uh, is our dinant. So our dinant is probably triggered. Uh, he has a trigger on, on uh, move semantics, our value chrono, and, and a few seconds after a question is being posted, if it is not a duplicate of existing question, you will get the answer from the man itself. And he says, yes, there is a reason. And the example that he gave is for equals delete, for saying we do not support const our values, which is fine but was not what I was looking for. So I created my own answer. So I, I say, I think that there is another usage. I think that in some cases, you do want to say that there is operation that can be performed on const our value, okay? But would not actually move, okay? So we, we just say that I want to support const our value for some reason. Uh, but not for moving, okay? And the answer that I gave is that smart pointers constructor, as an example, I mean, we can think of other similar use cases. Let's talk about the use case of, we want to create a smart pointer from a row pointer. And in a way, we cannot change it. It's, it's in the language already. But if I would think about that, I would say that the constructor of smart pointer shouldn't allow creating a smart pointer from an L value of a row pointer. Because if you have an L value of a row pointer, it means that somebody holds this row pointer, and then why should I take the smart pointer while you still hold it? You want to move it to me? So do a stood move. Or if you just create with make unique or call new without having a name for this pointer, then okay, I got it as an L value. So I think that in a way, the constructor for smart pointers, unique PTR and shell PTR, should have take our value. But then why const our value? Because I want to support also const pointers, which is a valid use case, right? But I don't want to support. That's correct. That's the answer of why maybe it was not uh, implemented. Anyhow, anyhow it's, it's the pointer which is const. So, uh, the, the idea is that, or, or you, maybe you want to support the value, which is const. It's, we can discuss that. But you probably do not want to support getting L value, which is supported today and is a bit bug prone. I mean, if I create smart pointer from L value row pointer and the row pointer is still being used, it is bug prone. So this is uh, my suggestion here. Again, as an example, I mean, if you have something quite similar of um, we have a resource and you should not take this resource as L value, only as R value. And it is okay if it is R value const or non const. I will go with, okay, implement something for const R value, which is the, like, the case for I support R value of const and non const. Um, you can go later to the question, uh, sorry, to the answer of this is the use case that I believe is relevant for R value being either const or non-const, both are valid, both should be supported. Other R value and smart pointer curiosities that I had. What's the problem with the following code? Pay attention, it's going to be long. Um, I'm creating a unique pointer, and then I decide that I don't need it anymore, and I release it. Yeah, the, the, that's, that's a straightforward leak. Now, that's, that's, that's a leak because we know that release doesn't really release, release, releases. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not releasing, it's releasing. It's, it's, it's not freeing, it's giving me back, okay? Bad choice of, of names. Uh, I mean, maybe the proper word would be um, um, dis, uh, discard or, or uh, detach, maybe, detach. Anyhow, anyhow, release says 
Can I get back the pointer? I don't want you to manage the pointer anymore. OK, right? So um, th th that's a leak, probably. OK, if you call release, probably you need to take back the pointer in order to continue and manage that. Otherwise, you are leaking. By the way, if I open Compiler Explorer um, and I'm running that with a sanitizer, then the sanitizer will say, man, you are leaking here, all the place. OK, there is a leak here. Yeah, there is a leak. That's good. Somebody watch this over. But, but then the question is, can the, language, can the language help us here? And the answer is, yeah, of course. How, can, how could the language uh, help, assist us? No, no. no discard. And release is not no discard. So my question was, why unique PTR release, uh, unique PTR release is not no discard? I mean, C17 added the attribute uh, no discard. And C20 added no discard to many standard library functions, like all the empty functions of containers. The empty function, when you call empty on a container, why did they add the no discard? Because people were confused with, I call empty in order to clear. No, you call empty in order to get the result, it is a Boolean, whether it is empty or not. So they added no discard, so we will not get confused between empty and clear. You want to clear, don't call empty. Oh, you call empty? Get back the result. It's a Boolean. It's a, uh, it's a question. It's an inquiry. Um, but they didn't add no discard on release. And, and I was curious why. So I asked the question in Stack Overflow, and I got a really good answer. I mean, the answer was, it was proposed. It was discussed in the ISO committee process. And then some company came up and said, well, we checked. And in 3% of our code base, we actually call release and don't get back the, the, the pointer. And the reason is that we all the pointer somewhere else. The name doesn't really matter, the, the company, Google. Um, <laughs> and, and, and since it's Google, they say, OK, uh, so we'll uh, waive that uh, suggestion. And um, everybody else may have bugs. You are uh, happy. And they just um, kept it as is without no discard. But you should know that if you call release, you should take the value, or maybe you can use some kind of a wrapper and say, no, so we wrap it and we add no discard, whatever. Um, other value and smart pointers curiosities. Uh, what's the problem with the following code? Again, not so complicated. <laughs> it's a classic dangling reference. I'm creating a unique, right, which is Temporary, our value, no name. Nobody holds it. It will die at the end of the statement. But then I'm getting back the, the ref, the value. I'm saying, can you please allocate something and deallocate that immediately at the end of the statement? Oh, and I want the reference to it. It compiles. We are in C++. Uh, but then I want to use the reference. OK, it's a, it's a classic dangling reference. I mean, it's OK. Uh, if I go to, again, Compile Explorer, Sanitizer will catch that, of course. Probably static code analysis as well. And then my question is, how can the language um, block that? Uh, what change could be done in the language to say, no, you cannot do that? Yeah, do something saying, if you're trying to deref an R value, uh, pointer, smart pointer, our value unique PTR, then you should know it is an our value. You have an issue, maybe delete that, or maybe say that you get back an our value. If I, if I would say you get back an our value, I, want, I don't want to delete it, I will, I will tell you why. Because this expression may be used in the same statement. And it might be that somebody needs allocation for the same statement, deref, and use it in the same statement. And I mean, you know what? I want to support that because maybe you need it. But then I would say the pointer, sorry, the reference that gets back, this one, should be an L value reference. How come it is an L value reference? And it was like bothering me. So I asked a question in Stack Overflow. And, and, and I got an explanation from Yecheskel sitting here, uh, second row. And, and I, I mean, I, 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 I got that as, OK, OK, that's an explanation why the language. language I, I, would, I think that language should have made it. Uh, um, oh, this is another one. I, I think that the language should uh, avoid that. But again, there is an explanation why maybe not. 
Uh, why are value unique PTR direct returns L value? Oh, this is the one. Okay, this is the question. So let's go for some language lawyer questions. What is a language lawyer question? It's a question that the answer is we should read in the spec. Let's see. The spec probably says what is the case. Uh, because in, in some cases, the, the answer is let's run and see what actually happens, right? Which in C doesn't say much in many cases. OK, it ran and do that. Uh, it doesn't say anything but is, when this is a, langu a language lawyer question, which is, is it undefined behavior? Oh, I, I don't know. If I will run and, and see what happens, it doesn't say anything. So let's see. I will not go through all of them. But um, is it un Oh, the first one is very interesting. I mean, I didn't think about that till I prepared the talk and saw this question. And then I thought, how come I didn't get into such a case? I mean, it's C++, maybe I got it, and, and it's in production code somewhere. Is it undefined behavior or illegal? By the way, what is the difference between undefined behavior or illegal? Or are they the same? So something can be illegal as a compilation error, OK? Diagnostic required. Something can be illegal, no diagnostic required, which is uh, by abbreviation IL and DR, IF, sorry. Yeah. Illegal form, yeah, the F of the form, IFNDR. Uh, illegal form, no diagnostic required, which means uh, you will not get compilation error, but it is illegal, which means that if you do that, you get undefined behavior. So something can be illegal, but without compilation error, and something can be illegal, and the spec says that you should get compilation error. So is it just undefined behavior, or maybe illegal of some kind? Uh, when I use a name that is both already declared outside of the class as a global variable or as a member and later declared inside the class. So, so the idea is that suppose that I use some global variable and I don't have this local and then later inside the function somewhere the local is being declared. So the one above is the global. Does the language say something about that? And I mean, why do you do that? Just don't. But, but if I do, I mean, I, I want to play with it. Or, or, or somebody wanted to play. He's not longer with us, but I just ran into his code. Anyhow, uh, it's an interesting question. I, I want to go there. I mean, I, I need your curiosity. Don't go now. Go in, in the break. Go there. Uh, 14 and 15 are the same, same issue. Is circumventing a class construct illegal? And the, the next one, constructing a trivially copyable object with mem copy. So the question is, let's assume that I'm creating an object not with new, not with a local automatic storage, but by allocating raw memory. Let's assume that I'm allocating raw memory for point, which holds x and y. Do I get a point? Do you get my point? I, I, I'm creating a point just not by creating point p, by allocating the size of the class point, and then, and then casting it, let's say with static cast, with C style cast, to point. So I'm actually having the memory for a point, and then saying, this is a point object. Do I get an actual live valid point object? And the answer is, well, it, it doesn't depend on the, on the standard anymore because uh, Within C20, they decided to uh, file a DR back to C98, uh, saying that it was and it is legal as long as you are trivially copyable and some other conditions that allow you to do that, um, which means that, yes, you can. Because otherwise, many things that we do in our code were broken. Some things that are in the standard library were broken, in a way. So they, they just fixed it. Uh, and the question is interesting because it had many answers which changed along the years. The, the question started before they changed it in the standard. So it had many, the discussion was there. And then eventually it had the final, and now we have the answer that yes, for some objects, it depends, of course. You cannot do that for a string. Why? Because a str string is not really copyable, it doesn't match the conditions. But you can do that, for example, for a point of x, y. Um, let's take another one. Is passing a CBS object into its own constructor legal? Oh, we talked about that one. Do you remember when we talked about that one, number 16? If you want to hold your own member, 
So when, when I prepared this talk and I had the question of can you hold your own member, I came into this question. Is it passing a civilized object into its own construct or legal? Uh, you see that uh, it's not my question. You see that uh, it got nice reputation. It, it's, it's a legal question. Can I create a foo with a foo? Okay, the class is foo. And of course, the name of the instance would also be foo. Uh, and then we want to pass a foo into it. Okay, the same foo that is being now born. Is it uh, legal? And the answer is the yes, it is legal as long as the usage that you are doing is taking its address. You cannot use inside the constructor any element, any member. Why? Because it's still, it is still being born. You cannot use something from the something that is currently being born, but the address is valid. So if you need that in order to take the address, that's fine. And I read the answer and I said, okay, it goes well with the thing that can something hold its own type. And then I said, but this question doesn't have, it has a valid answer saying, yeah, it is valid. Yeah, you can use it for taking others. But I was missing a use case. I'm, I was missing an example. So I said, let's add an example. And the example that I added, can you think of an example? Why should I get my own type in the constructor and in some cases send myself? Think of an example. Give it to a subordinate object. Give uh, uh, get a callback, so uh, it might be recursive in a way. Well, give it to a child. Yeah, something with a child. Okay, so uh, this is uh, some kind of the uh, thing that I have here. For the, uh, the example, by the way, the reputation is still zero because it's new. You can vote later on if you want. Uh, so we have an employee, and the employee has a manager. Okay, who is the manager of the manager? There is somebody who doesn't have any manager, but I decided in this example to have a const pointer for the employee. Uh, no, sorry, it is a const uh, uh, content. So what is the idea here? Uh, I get the employee as a reference, okay? And I want to initialize the manager with, uh, oh, since I'm getting a reference here in the constructor, so when I take the manager, I'm not taking a pointer. I'm taking a reference. I, I'm like forcing you, I'm forcing you to say, who is your manager? You cannot come in without telling me who is your manager. So I can complain if I want, okay? And you come and say, I, I don't have a manager. I'm my own manager, okay? Um, I'm the head of the pyramid, whatever. So in order to support that, in order to support that, I, I should allow sending myself as I manage myself. In which, in which case, I, I cannot pass null because I actually enforce that you must give me a manager. Some, something that I can call. I don't want the if for, do you have a manager? Yeah, you have. Yourself is also something that we can allow. Okay, so yeah, I mean, you can argue whether this is a good design or not, but it is an example that you can understand, yeah, I may send myself. Uh, in which case, I also hold myself, in which case I could have hold myself as reference. I could implement that as holding myself as my own type as a reference, and, and that's a valid use case. Um, so these are questions about language lawyer uh, uh, options. Polymorphism for std vector. I mean, th this one is, I, I don't know if you thought about that. It, it, it might be useful, it might be required, and it, it is not so simple in C++. And the question was, the, the title of the question is horrible. Somebody asked, I'm studying polymorphism and rent into a problem. I mean, w when a student sends me such an email, <sighs> First, I'm happy that there is a subject on the email, but, but uh, uh, I mean, there could be a better title, like, can we use vector in polymorphism or something like that? I, I, why should I care that you are studying polymorphism and that you ran into a problem? What is the problem? Go in and read about the problem. Anyhow, I, I think that uh, subject should say what you are asking. Uh, but, but the thing is that this uh, um, question has two kinds of vectors, a vector of sub one and a vector of sub two. And we need a, a, a function that would accommodate both type of vectors, okay? Can we use polymorphism in order to accommodate different type of vectors that manage a polymorphic hierarchy? So for example, I can get a vector of uh, employees, I can get a vector of students, so, and both uh, student and employee are 
in everything from a person. Can I get a vector of persons? No. A vector of person ampersand? No. So what is the, I mean in Java, in Java there is something with, um, how it is called, generics and, and um, the question mark and things like that. How do we do that in, in C++? Templates. Templates, yes, you need templates for that. Templates come, in, come into play. And, and if you really want in a way just not to say, okay, I can accommodate any type of template. I want to accommodate only a, a vector of the base class or it's derived. Concepts. So the idea is that I will uh, let you go into the answer. Uh, the idea is that you want a function that says, I'm accommodating a vector of t. Or maybe I can even say, you know what, let's go and see that. Uh, maybe I can say that t, I, I narrow t to be of some kind of, um, so um, w uh, by the way, you see me here on the question because I edited the question also. In some cases, you see the question and you say, okay, I just want to edit some detail in the question in order to make it more precise or more clear. And the idea is that eventually you want a template of, you say, um, with concepts that something about T is going to be narrowed to only those who are derived from, um, T should be derived from base. Base is the actual type that you want to support. Base or it's derived. Uh, so this is based on uh, requirement on the type T. And then you can actually get T. Now, if you are not with concepts, you are before C20, tough luck for you. You go with a full Sphena syntax that is also valid and looks like that. So eventually, yes, you can do that. With C20, it would be even nice, I would say, decent. Um, and in a way, by the way, when I wrote that, when I came to, to uh, give my answer, I had that in mind, but uh, writing this one takes a bit of time and, and practices my, my concept uh, uh, of concepts. Uh, so it is nice to practice that. And the way to learn is to ask questions, but also to answer. Because before I wrote that, I, I, it's quite new concepts, and, and that's nice to practice. Uh, so that was the one. Answering question eight years after asked. Uh, so there was a question on, I will tell you what is the question. Is it possible to detect namespace membership in C++? I mean, I want to ask something, from which namespace are you? Are you from this namespace? Now, uh, we don't have reflection yet, okay? So this question was from 2012. There was some kind of an answer out there. And for some reason, I came to the same um, usage need. I needed something similar. And I, I found this question. And I saw the answer that was there. And I, I felt that I, maybe I have something better. I felt, okay, I don't like the existing answer so much. I mean, it works, but I, I, I want to try something else. And eventually I, I created something else uh, based on uh, uh, ADL. Um, you can understand from which names where something comes, okay? And then I posted my answer. And in a way, quite a surprise, a few hours after that, maybe I can just press, uh, the question that came eight, eight uh, years after the, the original question was uh, asked got the green uh, check mark, which made me quite happy because, I, I mean, the person is still alive, the one that asked the question. I mean, this is, in our industry, is, is, is a good thing. And, and he's still in C++, probably he's still programming, he's still uh, visiting uh, Stack Overflow, that, that's good. And I, I felt that, yeah, I'm still contributing in a way. Uh, th now, the reason that I put the answer there was not to, I, I mean, it, it was not uh, being nice. That was not the reason. Uh, occasionally, I'm trying to be nice, but th that's not my, my main uh, aim here. It was for documenting my knowledge for myself. I mean, I would want to go back sometime and say, how did I do that? And my laptop with the example will not be there. I can put it on my Git. But the best place for me here is to put it somewhere that I can go back and, and find, which in that case was Stack Overflow. Uh, so we are on the almost last one. Uh, Stack Overflow community serves as my memory extension in some cases. Uh, we saw yesterday, uh, the, uh, if you were in the meetup uh, late evening, uh, Diego from JFrog at the Kahoot, 
And in the Kahoot, he used uh, some kind of um, operators overloading for uh, doing stuff. And there is a nice library for creating shapes and, um, and prisms and calculating area. And I, I remember that I saw that somewhere, and I wanted to present that somewhere, and I didn't find that. I, I mean, I remember that there is a library allowing you to create these nice shapes and create area, et cetera. So this thing is an object, OK? But I couldn't find it. So I asked in Stack Overflow, can somebody help me find that? The question was closed. Life is so hard. But somebody was able to answer before it was closed and pointed me to the right uh, place. So I got the, the thing. I have a memory extension in Stack Overflow. I remember something. I don't have all, all the details. Somebody in the community can help. This is the way. Uh, so even though it is closed, I, I got somewhere the, the answer. If you want to find how do you do that, oh, there is the link. This is the question. Uh, and somewhere, maybe it was in the comment. I don't remember where. The, uh, by the way, you can add comments even on a closed uh, question. No, it, it is in the answers. OK? And you can actually create uh, three-dimensional. Oh, sorry, I was answering. I, I, do the, I did that because somebody answered here, Storyteller. Well, the Storyteller, I don't know if he's here. Storyteller is uh, Israeli. Uh, works for Bloomberg. Uh, I don't know if I can tell his real name, but um, he's quite smart. And he just put the tear. And then because he didn't put a, an answer and I wanted to elaborate, I, I just took it and, and added that as an answer. So eventually it helps. Um, can GPT do better? So um, I, I mean, eventually it may. You know that when uh, ChatGPT got out, there was an uh, uh, announcement in uh, Stack Overflow saying you should not post answers that are coming from ChatGPT. They, they removed that already. But the idea was that if you just you know, take a question, put it in, Stack, in, in ChatGPT, take the answer and post that, most probably are putting garbage in. Okay? That may look good, but it's not the actual answer that people are looking for. Uh, it is not there anymore. But can I use JetGPT instead of Stack Overflow? So I can tell you that in some cases, I used that and got better results than trying to find the answer in, in Stack Overflow or in Google. I mean, I looked for some specific Sphina uh, uh, statements, something that I need, and JetGPT exactly gave me what I need. Well, I'm trying to look for that, and you know, I get all kind of different things that are not what I'm looking for. But I want to give you another uh, example. I asked ChatGPT, is it legal or undefined behavior in C++ to pass an object on its definition to its own constructor? Do you remember this question? It was one of the questions. Is it legal, by the way? It is. It depends on what you're trying to achieve. Are you trying to take all, only the address? Let's see what ChatGPT says. By the way, 3.5, maybe 4, improved. So the answer is. Passing an object to its own constructor while defining is not illegal in C++, but is, it is undefined behavior. Let's try to, to start with it. It is not illegal. So it means that it is legal, right? The, the, I think that there are only two states here, illegal and legal. Well, it, there, there may be more if it's undefined behavior. But undefined behavior is illegal, right? It's not legal. Undefined behavior is legal. You, don't, you, sh you should not have undefined behavior in your code because then it is undefined and then your code is undefined. So no. So I would, I would we, can, we can discuss it later. But I would argue, I will take that later in the, in the question and answers part, OK, in, in a moment. So I will argue that if it is not illegal, then sounds to me that it is legal, which means that it cannot be undefined behavior. But let's continue. This is because during construction, the object is not fully constructed. That's correct. And its state is. Indetermined, uh, indeterminate. Attempting to access the object before it has been fully constructed can lead to unexpected results, etc. In general, it is a good idea to avoid such self-referential self constructor. The idea is that you get here something which the advice is nice, but the information is wrong. You can do that. It is legal. We saw that. So uh, I would uh, tell you, yeah, use ChatGPT, but with a grain of salt. Think for yourself, check things. Uh, one, uh, a few posts that I wrote about ChatGPT, I also had a, a talk in C++ Now 2023. Uh, the video is not posted yet, but this is a link to the conference, and, and uh, probably the video will be uh, published soon. Uh, to summarize, 
It's going to be a very short summar summary. In order to improve your C++ level, read questions first. I mean, you have free time, so divide it. 50 minutes, Facebook, Twitter, all the all this stuff. 10 minutes, a question in Stack Overflow. OK, that's a valid uh, time split. Uh, ask questions. You have, you have something? Ask. Don't, don't be shy. Try to answer. I mean, when you try to answer, don't feel that I cannot answer because I don't know the answer. Y you can decide not to press the submit button. But you know, start answering. Oh, maybe you do know the answer. So this is the way to learn. Because when you answer, in a way, you uh, enforce yourself to think about that again. And you may want also to play with ChatGPT. Uh, there is a bonus question that I will just put up front. Think about that. The link is here. Uh, what really happens when you don't free after malloc before program termination? Program terminated, and we still have unfree, uh, unfreed memory. Is it okay? Is it okay to have such code? I mean, most of you say, yeah, the program is going, going to terminate. There is a very nice discussion there. The answer is, as always, it depends. Uh, but the, the discussion is important, and that's it. And I, I'm ready, I think, for one or two uh, uh, questions, even though I, I over time, but I, I saw something. Uh, or you, you can approach. Shaka, yes. So the, the question was, uh, do I feel that Stack Overflow is toxic in a way that you ask a question and um, you get um, attacked for the question? The question is going to be closed because they think that the question is not so good, etc. I try to, in a way, um, mitigate that to be nice. So, so uh, no, I'm saying that if you see something that is not nice, try to be nice. I mean, if you see that a question is going to be closed and you say, and you say but I think that question is good. So. You can say it's a valid question. You can vote to uh, open it. You can uh, answer it. You can write in the comment. Uh, so this is what I do. But uh, and, and in, in some cases, I do I agree that closing questions that are not so good is, is, is OK, it's valid. I get questions that are closed that I'm asking. Then I, I rephrase them if needed. Thank you very much. I'm here for a discussion if anybody wants. <laughs>